I once saw Jeff Thomas get punched in the face. Shit split, blood all on his uniform. By the son Troutman brother, Trinell Troutman. But we'll get into that later. Well, Biggie said, gather, gather around, gather around, got a story to tell. Like, this was 2017-18X. When, when? See, that'd be 16, 16. Come back Paradise Camp, right? Nah, nah, it wasn't at Paradise Camp. This was at a 7 on 7 tournament oh, yes. two months before two months before he came to UM. Okay, so gotta be 17. 2000, 2017, we up in Broward at a 7 on 7 tournament. Um, South Florida Express, strong gong, um, uh, teams from all, all across Florida were there. Um, and there was a team that was there that I thought was from St. Cloud, Florida. I saw them on the, I thought, I, I didn't pay attention to it, you know what I'm saying? It said they were from St. something. Didn't really pay attention to it. Saw them play one game. Um, didn't really pay attention. They was across on the field over there. Um, but South Florida, South Florida Express, the heyday, man, when they were, had all everybody, man. They were Big Talk and Dominic Walk. They had Chanel Trout, man. They had, it, they they just they had they had everybody everybody. Um, they got the ready to play this team that I'm assuming is a St. Petersburg or a St. Cloud, but the team actually was from St. Louis, St. Louis which was yeah. odd. You know what I'm saying? It was like they from where? It was like yeah, man, they from St. Louis. They came out here <laughs> to qualify for the IMG tournament. It was like a delay. Like a three-hour delay for any game started. It was it was horrible what was going on, but eventually they got on the field. You know what I'm saying? This was the time when they quite right. James Cook, all them played for strong on. So South Florida Express versus this team from St. Louis. South Florida Express talking trash, lockdown. You niggas from St. Louis, nah nah. nah. Cable is on video, and we're gonna see if we can find. I put it up. It, no cable over here, no signal, no Wi-Fi, no nothing. Talking all double trash. And I'm standing next to Dominique Watt. Dominique Watt like 6'2". Kid look like he got two kids. You know what I'm saying? Wide receiver played with the long dress, played for Miramar. Um, so we're standing next to Nick Dominique Watt. And, and, and they talking trash, then the game starts. The kid wasn't saying much. He was quiet. You know what I'm saying? He wasn't saying much. He lines up. And when the quarterback said hike, he was about, man, they were about maybe five yards away from me and Dominique. When the quarterback said hike, he took off so fast. I looked at Dominique Watt. I said, you saw that? <laughs> and Dominique Watt said, yeah. He took off so fast, boom, 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 quarter pass. Quite maybe three, three passes on, on, on that drive, and it gets down to the goal line. So I thought the ain't, ain't really talking as, as, as much. And it got a little quiet. Now we're trying to figure out, like, who, like, who, the, who, the, who, the, who, the, who is this? You know what I'm saying? Somebody get a roster. Somebody get Google. And some, some ain't right. Jeff Thomas somehow gets loose. Because they was having, in that first drive, they was having real problems guarding him. You know what I'm saying? But we didn't know who he was. I had seen him at the Under Armour game. I saw him at the Under Armour game. He won Officer Player of the Year. But I didn't really remember what he looked like. Like, you know what I'm saying? I didn't really remember what he looked like. So, back in the end zone, he runs like a down and in, catches the touchdown. And as soon as he caught the touchdown, he started, he, 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 then he started talking. He started talking. I think he got in your um, Chanel Trapman cousin face. You know, coming because I think maybe he pushed him or something, and Jeff Thomas swung him. Jeff so, so Jeff Thomas took through the first punch. You know what I'm saying? Jeff Thomas swung on him, and, and then Chanel Trapman came. He caught him, boom, caught him from behind. They got into it, big scuffle. Came out of Jeff Thomas had a split on his eye, um, and now everybody there. I'm there, Andrew Albans there, uh, all the media there. Two months before Jeff Thomas was supposed to be at the University of Miami. They break everything up. Um, I can't remember if they finished the game. I, I don't think they finished that game. I think uh, South Florida Express forfeit. One of the teams had to the forfeit. They break everything up. Jeff Thomas is walking around, and the rumor started starting like, hey, that's 
that's Jeff, that's Jeff Thomas, <laughs> University of Miami wide receiver for St. Louis. It, it, it started, the world started getting out of there, out, getting out. So I tried to get him in the interview. I'm like, man, tell this coach I want to talk to him. Um, and he was like, nah, he said he don't feel like talking now. And this is before we knew Jeff, what Jeff was dealing with. I ain't really know him, you know what I'm saying? I ain't know him at all. Um, and later that night, this is how, this is how, um, well, I ain't gonna confirm it from y'all. Later that night is the night that I shot the DJ Ivy versus Jeff Thomas video. Um, when when DJ Ivy team went one on one, I mean went went against Jeff Thomas and he guarded Jeff Thomas one on one um, the whole night, um, which is impossible to do. Um, but that's when I shot that video. So if y'all wanna go check out that video, type it in DJ Ivy versus Jeff Thomas. And if you look, pay attention to Jeff Thomas. You can see you can see the stains on the face and he got a, a band aid under his eye. I thought for sure somebody was going to tweet that, report that, put a video out <laughs> or something, dog. I was a football fan. I was never into that stuff. I was never into putting out the dirt and, 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 and things of that nature. That, that never really well, it was built on. Nobody said a word. Nobody said a word. Jeff Thomas went on the University of Miami, and it was what it was. But I was there. If y'all ever heard of a rumor out there, something happened. I was there today. The basically, Chanel Troutman punched, punched Jeff Thomas in the face and, 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 and split him two months before it was time for him to go. So, and Chanel Troutman had to be like a freshman or something. <laughs> a freshman. Two months before he was supposed to be at UM. And everybody said, listen, man, why he out there playing 707? He better to go to UM. He finna go to college. Man, listen, man, these kids be want to play. They want to get out there and they want to play. Um, and I would have thought that he would have sat down after that. But no, man, he got back out there. He went one-on-one -on -one versus DJ Ivy. And that's when I realized that that he was a superhero. I mean, DJ Ivy trying to stand in front of him. DJ Ivy just had to back off. He just had to back off him. Because his release off the line was the fastest thing I ever saw. Um, I've seen Calvin Ridley, Jerry Judy. Name him. I don't saw them all. The, when he would come off the line and how he get in and out of his breaks, um, only person who close to that was is Jerry Judy. Um, so yeah, that's my Jeff Thomas story. Uh, that Tom been trying to get me to tell you all <laughs> forever. Uh, I once saw Jeff Thomas get punched in the face and kept the secret to myself. All right, I'm gladly here to tell you we have a new partner, which is Edge Edge Energy Drink. The best tasting energy drink in the planet. I ain't just saying that. It's the best tasting energy drink I ever taste. It tastes way better than Red Bull. Liquorsplit.com is how you get it. You can't get it in the store. Liquorsplit.com delivers liquor and they'll deliver your edge for free. One time. Liquorsplit.com. Check out the edge. Shout out to our partners. Sponsor Edge Energy Drink. Best tasting energy drink in the planet. I ain't lying. I ain't lying. So yeah, that's my story, man. I once saw Jeff Thomas get punched in the face by the Sean Trotman brother, Trinell Trotman. The Sean Trotman. I found out recently from Coach Rob, who coached Trinell Trotman 2-2 two -two at Liberty City, uh, U football, two national championships, that the Sean Trotman was brothers of Trinell, but Trinell Trotman's brother. Um, Trinell Trotman is dark, Dark after Trail Troutman, the color scale turns back white. He's dark, dark. Deshaun Troutman is light skinned and he can go for Pedro. And <laughs> but I, yeah, Rob told me that they're actually brothers, brothers, cousins, some, something in that now, nature. Now, 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 now to come think about it, the way uh -huh. Deshaun acts. It makes sense now. It makes it all makes sense because I was like, man, yeah, 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 yeah like, <laughs> right, yeah, like he's from the street streets, man. But yeah, you know, now it makes sense. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I heard, I heard they were they were brothers, man. Um, listen, I was at a youth football game um, the other day, and I took a picture of one kid. I took a picture of the kid, and maybe ten minutes later. Uh, Parents came up to me, I mean, it was from out of town, you know what I'm saying, it was from out of town, so I thought that maybe they wanted to say something about football field, but a parent came up to me and basically was like, hey man, I don't think y'all should just take a picture of one kid 
when the whole it takes the whole team to win the game. Um, and it was him and, and, and it was two of them, two parents. He was like, yeah, I think you should take a picture of the whole team. And I looked at him. And years ago, I couldn't have this conversation. I, I, I didn't know how to have this conversation. But I have it now. I have it. I looked at him and I said, listen, life ain't fair. Um, that's, not how, that's not how the thing works. It, it's... The, the kid that gets the attention, and it, it really means nothing. You know what I'm saying? It, it, it helps the kid, and it helps them. It, it, it can help them get their name out there. It can help people recognize who they are. But at the end of the day, how they perform, how you perform as you go up, is the only thing that, that matters. But I'm telling the parent, and I, and, I'm, and and this is for all parents. You, the only reason you feel that way is because you're emotionally attached to your son, to your son or your daughter, seeing your daughter succeed. When the game is going on, you ain't watching nobody but your child. Yeah. That's it. You ain't paying attention to Gail's son. You ain't watching nobody but your child. You want the best for your son. So, when you come up and that feeling that you're like, man, he ain't do it by himself. It was a team effort. It's true. It is true. But the only reason you're thinking like that is because that's not your son I'm taking a picture of. That makes sense? Because if it was your son I was taking a picture of, I've never, maybe once or twice, maybe once, I've had somebody say, nah, 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 man, nah. I want everybody to come, <laughs> everybody to come get in the picture. Everybody come get in the picture. My son ain't do this by himself. That has happened maybe once, once or twice in my whole six, seven years of youth football. This is one of those situations where I start talking about the mind and how the mind is like a seesaw and how it works. The same person that would come up to me and say, man, you should take a picture of the whole defense because it's a team thing. They do it together. It's the same person to be like, man, Frank Gore won all the games by himself. <laughs> the same person will make both statements. All card games was with Frank Gore. He was doing that thing by himself. Our mind is like a seesaw. It's like, it's like we make our reality what, what the world is. Whatever you want it to be in your mind, you create it and make it to what the world is. So when it's your, when it's your child, it's unfair <laughs> for, for you to single them out. Because your child isn't the one being singled out. But if your child is being singled out, yeah, you'll look at it totally different. Ex, you coached before. You coached before, right? How y'all deal with the parents, bro? Like, I saw a mom snatch her son off the field the other day. It was like, uh-uh, he only played one minute and he... You can tell he was little, he was new, he had just started. How you deal with that, though? When I started, when I started coaching, I started coaching the big boys. I, I could never do, deal with the little, the little kids because of the parents. You know, basically you 14, 15, they parents don't care. They parents might not be there. Right. But the little kids, they parents do. They vocal. Um, I couldn't do it because they, they want to be involved. I'm like, well, you know, my, why don't you come out there and coach your son and coach the team? I, I, I promise you, man, I would have, I, I had 12 kids on my team because I would not, I would just be sorry. I would not have, it, it, I'm out here for free. It's enough going on already. I'm trying to deal with these kids and the attitudes. But I am not taking pressure from you, the parent. Hey, man, come get little Timmy. And you and little Timmy, get the hell up out of here. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Do a glover, man. Take, take, take my stuff off right now. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> that ain't, that ain't the words you say, though, but he like, take my stuff off now and leave it. Yeah, yeah. Because, and I'm not saying it's not in a disrespectful way. It's more so of is that I just think you got to draw the line. Like, I've maybe set a date. Hey, all Wednesdays, we meet 30 minutes before practice. And parents, we come sit down, we talk. I bring you hot dogs. We chop it up. You know what I'm saying? And yeah, we talk and we, you get off what you got to get off your chest. But when this thing starts, man, listen. I don't walk in your house telling you when to scramble the eggs. Don't come over here telling me, <laughs> telling me what to do with my team. Um, and you, you, you notice it gets worse the more you lose. The, the coach that wins don't really get, yeah, you know, get all that. They get it sometimes. I mean, you go, you, you, but it's easier to to to, to look over because we win it. What do you want me? You want me to change? Right, right, doing? right. The, the more you lose, the more the crowd becomes smarter than you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> hey, another night Luke said this was funny. Luke said, Luke said, I be seeing dudes betting on new football games and stuff, man. 
he, he was talking about people wanting to coach after they want to coach the team with, with the studs on them. He said, man, this is how you bet on the game. Just look at the team with the most coaches. <laughs> he said the team with the most coaches is the team with all the dogs. No, if that ain't so, if that ain't true, that is that is one of those true statements I ever said in my life. Y'all talking about Luke just be rapping. Fool, listen, that is the truth, and that goes all the way up to kind of high school. The team, it may work in college too. <laughs> the team with all the coaches. No, it does work in college because you look at Alabama; they got like hundred coaches on the staff. No, you know I thought that was so funny because that's something I never thought about. He like, man, just bet on the team with all the coaches. Yeah, nah, nah, that's that's real. That's real. Yeah, man, y'all make sure y'all like, share, and comment, man. And um, if you want to join, it's in the description now. You ain't got no iPhone, y'all ain't got no excuses anymore. It's in the description, right at the top. Join, become a member, support what we got going on. Peace. Oh,